all right. I think we're streaming. Um, YouTube, uh, sorry for being late. Uh, YouTube has enhanced my user experience by making things worse. So I'm actually, I'm pretty sure I'm streaming. I'm gonna see what I'm digging around in. I just need some buttons. Twenty-seven. Right. I can't use this. Hey all. Okay. Got it. So this is our, our mic mic. I'm pretty sure this is working. YouTube is being ridiculous, and um, I'm not quite sure what's going on right now. Uh, it says that someone might be watching, though, so that's that's a positive. It means something is going right. There we go. So when we last left Troy, um, he just finished building this mic mic. The macro tool that we will use to play back macros, probably. Just need some buttons so you, you can actually see what I'm doing. And the layout is uh, more or less this. So arrow keys and then a uh, cancel and uh, an OK. There we are. So, very nice. Let me move this out of the way. Maybe see that a little bit better. Okay. See, I still don't even know if this is working. No, I'm sure it's fine. So let's look at oh wait, where'd it go? Okay, it's over there. Cool. And I can't change the title of the stream because um, because YouTube is just YouTube. Oh, wait, is this it? Okay, this is it. It reset everything. Okay, whatever. Okay, I'm sorry, just YouTube is just unbelievable. <sighs> okay, well, it's just, we're doing it, we're doing it live. Um, so let's increase our, so what is it, control X, control plus, there we go. Very nice. Um, box, Arduino, micro, micro, mic, mic. There we are. I hope this is nice and visible because it kind of needs to be. Let's move me over here. Ah! Okay, now we can see stuff. Hey, how's it going? So uh, last night we made uh, Mike Mike, and here's one. Here's another one. Lighting kind of stinks. I'm sure everything's nice and visible though. So let's go ahead and get one of these programmed, and I'll show you how Mike Mike works. 
Um, yes, my pin pull up is different. Let's KiCad a little bit. See how I actually made this. Oops. Okay. <clears throat> All right, CL, we've got that broken out. Let's put on number seven. Ah, uh, the translation's always annoying on this. That's why I have this here. And seven, it's actual pin seven, I think. I'm also doing this on the laptop because Nothing seems to work at any point. <laughs> the laptop is set up best uh, for this. So, just ran a little late, I apologize. Button two net. There's button one. It says it's on number seven. And number seven is I might be able to get away with this. Okay, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Ah. Okay, it's labeled pin 4. It's D4. I think that's the Arduino labeled pin, though. Well, that would mean it's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So let's find out. 7, 8, 9, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. That should be it. So let's get to our buttons. No, no, no. There we are. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's an uh, increment number at point. Let's see if I can do this. Increment number at point. Oh, it's just doing the last point. Okay, that's fine. So, uh, commit number at point. What's that doing? Let's do increment number at point. Okay, let's, let's build a little macro here real quick. So let's record a macro of, uh, Increment number at point down left. Finish the macro. And we'll at Q at good. It's a little weird, but it works. Also, why am I looking at this screen instead of the screen I'm actually working on? This is just complicated. All right, and we were at nine, right? So button six should be pin 12. Pin 12 is number nine. Pin button six, number nine. Okay, so let's write that and do one of, move that closer. All right, so this is plugged in and it's, it's reading. So let's see our Nardo, CM0. Okay, this looks legit. Let's, let's see what happens. Do our upload. Arduino-ifying. Completed. All right. So now we are, of course, going to do our uh, serial terminal in, in Emacs, because why else would you, where else would you go besides Emacs? This is dev TTY CM0. You know, dev TTY ACM zero baud is one point two oh oh. Hey hey, look at that. Um, 
Look at that. Welcome to Mike Mike. So we can control this from the, uh, so what I'm actually doing right here is I'm logged into this device. Um, nope, nope, nope. There we go. So here's Mike Mike, and here's me. <laughs> so this is, uh, this is laid out much the way that these are. We've got arrow keys and an inverted T orientation, and then uh, a yes and a no, or a yes and a no. <clears throat> so I'm actually looking at the serial interface right here, and I'm going to type straight into this serial interface. So I can control Mike Mike by typing directly into here. Or can I? Oh, there we go. Got out of insert mode. Or I can control this on mic mic itself. So let's do something cool. Um, what is a good program? Uh, I think that's kind of silly. Let's do um, a terminal. Uh, control equal. There we go. Just want something to be able to type this directly into where you can still see the output from Mike Mike. Okay. There's our Vim buffer. Test. Okay. <clears throat> so back in Mike Mike, let's say uh, we, 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 want, we want to do test here. Uh, let's do something as simple J. We just want to put a J and we're in insert mode here. So let's go back to Mike, Mike <clears throat> say, all right, Mike, Mike, uh, let's edit a macro. That's weird. Keep getting out of insert mode. Choose a macro, choose macro zero. So now we've got go that's a little bit readable more readable We've got a list of our empty actions these are the instructions that we're going to do with Mike hey hey how's it going hi my name's Troy uh, this is Mike Mike well this is Mike Mike and this is Mike Mike it's just a little macro controller uh, but the cool thing about it is you can live replay it and you can live update it so you don't have to reprogram it you just have to log into it like this, and then you can change the settings by using Mike Mike to interface with it, or by using the serial terminal itself. This doesn't have, okay, that's why. Hold on a moment. Let's see. That would be, let's do escape my insert mode. Go back out of here, go to my init. I've got some fix in here. Bingo. What line is this? 105. That's weird. Assumed mode. There it is. 
Sorry, there's a little bit of a JK weirdness here. There we go, much better. Now I won't drop out of uh, insert mode. So Mike Mike will let you record and play back stuff and uh, allow you to also change the, uh, or move the mouse positions. So uh, we might have some, <clears throat> use something that's a little more clickable. Um, let's do, uh, look at that, advanced mode. Let's do something silly. <clears throat> So, okay, let's try this. So, uh, using IW, uh, I, or I3WM, you can actually control the context of what you're clicking on and what you're typing in by moving your mouse. So all you have to do is move your mouse in order to generate what, uh, to determine what you're going to be typing into. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is uh, we type, we type J over here. Let's look at our mic mic and say, all right, mic mic, edit a macro. Let's edit macro number one and let's choose an action. The first action we're going to choose is a mouse move. Mouse move. There's some instructions there, I guess. And we're going to press Oh, okay, so my mouse context moved and when I started typing into this screen, it was typing into uh, this window over here. So let me just slowly navigate the mouse over here because you can't see it because it's on another screen. Uh, hey, there it is, look at that. There's our mouse. So now I am I'm now controlling this mouse with Mike Mike and I'm using the arrow keys on Mike Mike to move the mouse around to where I want it to be. Now, now that I actually have this context, you can also type this into the serial terminal itself and control mouse position that way. I3 doesn't always like it when you do that. So I'm typing into this serial terminal and this serial terminal is connected to this device and it's typing into my computer. <laughs> so figure that out. Uh, but the point is we're able to move the mouse around and do important stuff like click the 9 button. So I've made this move I've navigated my mouse cursor to where I want it to be. I'm going to press nine. Uh, I'm done with this move. So I'm gonna hit this okay button here and it records my action. So there's my mouse move uh, to a certain uh, location. <clears throat> so now I can move my mouse using macro zero to that location. So let's go back to the beginning, play a macro, choose the macro to use, macro zero, the one we just recorded, and it should move, the ma move my mouse to that nine. And there we are. You can see, and we can play that back as much as we want. Oh, as long as I actually type into the, the terminal system. And I can, of course, use Mike Mike to choose <clears throat> the macro that I'm going to use. And I can play that back as many times as I want. And every time I press it, it's going to take control of the mouse. It's going to reset it, and it's going to move it to that position. But that's not particularly interesting. There we go. So let's do something more interesting. Let's go back to macro zero that we recorded and let's add a left click action. Mouse left click. And again, all of these things are, you can control these using mic mic. So now we're going to move to that nine and then we're gonna click the nine. Let's go back, play a macro, macro zero, activate. Look at that, it's a nine. This is amazing stuff. Everyone's, everyone's very excited. Q, please, please clap. <laughs> Uh, so we've got our, our nines there, nine, 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 nine. <clears throat> now, the important thing to remember is this macro movement, this mouse movement, is only relative to this computer and the clicking portion. So 
if I were to take that nine position and uh, move my move it over a little bit and then run the macro, I'm now clicking eight. So if you've got windows that uh, load in different locations, then you're going to have uh, a difficult time. But now we're pressing eight. Let's, let's just go back to nine, just in order to to keep things keep things the same here. This is all very very educational. So clicking nine is not that helpful, actually. So let's go back to edit a macro, edit macro zero. And we've got our mouse move and our mouse left click. But you know what? Let's let's not move to that nine anymore. Let's just delete that move. And we'll replace it with a mouse move that goes to another location. And uh, I'm pressing the down arrow and I'm navigating the mouse from my screen over here down to where you guys can see it. So please bear with me a moment. Uh, Emacs does have a calc mode, but uh, I actually need to click stuff. <laughs> so it, it would be a bad example for what Mike Mike can do. Now we can properly press the eight um, <clears throat> because this is, this is what we we're here for, pressing the eight. So I've just updated the mouse move action and I still have the mouse left click action on macro zero. So now if I play that back, obviously we're clicking on the eight. Move it away, click on the eight. <clears throat> so let's go back to our macro. Now we're gonna click on the eight. And let's, uh, let's press Let's press uh, plus. Let's see if that works. Plus. Tab keyboard button. That's not that's not accurate. Uh, we could do any button. It doesn't actually matter. Uh, so let's do a plus. And I believe I can hit enter here. Yep. Okay. Tab key plus. And you see the comma there. There's actually the tab key function has two uh, two memory slots. So I can set another byte for another key if we want to tap that as well. So let's do. What are we, we're clicking eight. Let's do two. Okay, so we'll tap a plus and then a two in macro. So we're gonna come down here. We're gonna click on this. We're gonna navigate to this point. We're going to left click, and then we're going to tap the plus button, and then we're gonna tap the two button. So let's see what happens because the T the key tap feature is uh, somewhat new. <clears throat> so let's play macro. That might have been a little fast. Oh. oh, the cursor context. Okay. So the cursor context, as long as I'm clicked here, I should be able to do that. Okay. Uh, so if your if your cursor is blinking in this position, then it's ready to it's ready to do stuff. So now we can do. 8 plus 28 plus 28, as much as we want. Are you seeing the, the benefits here? This The amazing features? <laughs> but let's not do... <clears throat> After we do this, we're going to have to... It's this, thank you, sad clap for... Or sad face for clapping. <laughs> After that, we'll do... Uh, let's do a short delay so that we have, uh, we have time to, to compose ourselves. After that amazing action, we'll set it for a thousand milliseconds, and then uh, we will tap equal and achieve achieve greatness. So you can see we're building instructions here. We've got the mouse move, the left click, the key tap of plus, the key tap of two, a one second delay, and then the key cap key tap of equals. <clears throat> so now. As long as we keep our cursor context typed here, we should be able to uh, do that then there, okay? <laughs> uh, let's go back, play macro, choose macro, zero. So keep our cursor clicked there, our context. Look at that. I, I actually thought the equals would, would generate the, the outcome output, uh, but it does not. The two, so we've got eight two, pause for one second, and then the click. Now keep in mind, uh, this is 
sending input as a standard HID device. So as far as your computer is concerned, you're just typing on a keyboard and moving a mouse, uh, which means that if you give it alternative input, which I'm going to do by, can you see this? Okay, there we go. I'll, I'll move this track point or the move the pad around and then press the button and you'll find that I can actually interfere with it. I pressed, I pressed nine there. There's a division sign because it's sending those mouse inputs and then it's actually my I'm dragging the mouse somewhere else before it clicks. So it's a uh, it's something to keep in mind that you you give it no other input while that's happening while the macro is playing back because this is a separate device. <clears throat> so let's go back to our, our edit macro and uh, let's in our vim buffer here. Let's do a let's do a new macro. Let's leave some empty action spaces here so we can move stuff around if we want to. <clears throat> I actually don't know. Why is this? I don't know what this is. Uh, the instructions are very helpful here. This says press button. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I just do a, let's see, left hold, left click. I mean, it's pretty much up to you at this point uh, to, to determine the amazing features that are available. Um, but if you want to be in Vim and do something ridiculous like right quit or something, you can do that. Amazing. It's just about pressing buttons and reducing the amount of buttons you have to repress. Yeah, these, these mouse moves are a little weird. It makes i3 spaz out. So here's our move. I'm moving the mouse to here. And then we'll leave a little space, do a left click, and then we'll tap some keys. I don't know why I'm looking over there. I keep looking at the screen for that thing. Uh, let's do, where are we? We're in insert mode. So let's do a very, very important macro that we all should have. D, D, F, this is, this is what we need. Um, and now that I've switched my context, I can actually be, I can actually control this output with mic mic directly. So now I can use, I can interface with mic mic without having to have my context shifted. So I can still be in the calculator and interface with mic mic. As you can see, I have, This is me not messing with Mike Mike. It, it has its own controlling system. So that's pretty neat. Um, but let's go in here. I think I'm, yeah, I'm in, I'm, in, I'm in insert mode. All right, so let's go ahead and play the macro back. Macro zero and, oh, right. I put it in macro one. So as you can see, we have this very important feature uh, secured that we can, we can type ASDF into, move the mouse cursor to here and then type ASDF. Uh, or we can move the mouse cursor here and type eight plus two and then wait a second and then hit equals. What might happen if you press one macro and then the next one right after the other while it's during a wait? That's an excellent question and let's find out. Okay, it just discards it because of the wait. Uh, I think the wait is a, a hardware wait, so it just doesn't do anything. So we can play back all of these important macros. And, and if you're if you record like mouse moves and stuff, <clears throat> you don't have to worry about like how it how it plays back because it's it's its own separate device. Uh, so let's do something a little bit more uh, you know useful. Oh, let's let's do let's do that. We got to do that. Okay, here's how you quit Vim. All right, edit a macro. Macro two is quit Vim. And we'll do a key tap. Here we go. Colon. Q. And then another key tap. Bang. And I don't think I can do, I don't think I have a return programmed in here. It's just S. Yeah, it's not it. I don't want that. <clears throat> delete. 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 Okay. Delete. Q. 
to, there we go. Going to, oh right, no, it's a bang, all right. Key tap, bang. I don't have some of the extended keys in here just yet. So that, so macro two is how to quit Vim, all right. So you're, you're sitting here, you're Viming along, you're doing your own thing, and then you hit uh, <clears throat> macro two, and it does colon two. So you have to get put an escape in there first. <laughs> The point is you're just you're just doing straight output. Oh, it didn't like that at all. Colon. Well, I don't have I just I, I customize way too much. Alright. That's what's it's disappointing. Uh I don't have colon as my um my vim entry, my vim uh command is actually semicolon for me because I just personalize everything okay now macro too so you can see we've had we had a macro we made a mistake and instead of me having to pop back into Arduino or pop back into the code <clears throat> I instead am using Mike Mike directly I'm, I'm logged into Mike Mike I'm changing uh, my instruction set on the fly and now I can play back that macro macro number two and learn important lessons about how to quit quit things in Vim. Uh, I actually think that'll yeah see. Highly important, useful thingies. That's how you quit. You quit Vim. <clears throat> and the context of that is, like, there is no context to that. You just it just types that. And if you want, we can go back to the calculator. I think the calculator one was this and this mouse this is windows about in that area so if i do that it ta it clicks and then it types plus two and then equals <clears throat> so all of this is just you can live record all of this as long as you want but let's go to do something a little bit more useful <clears throat> i think i've got there we go so here's mike mike uh, and uh, one of the use cases i had for mike mike while i was actually programming or designing the circuit board for Mike Mike was that uh, one of these pads or a bunch of these pads were set incorrectly. So let's look at this a little bit. So I had these pads and they were not defined properly. If I hit E on here, oh, let's see. I might not be able to edit that pad. Oh, okay. So. I come, I come, I go into KiCast. I uh, I hit E on the, I point at the pad. See, this clarify selection is going to be a problem. Let's. I keep looking at that. Sorry. Is it on the zone? Such is life in the zone. Um, I think the pad is actually going to be. Yeah, it's kind of weird. So we've got the pad here, and I want to clarify the selection. I think if I get right there, okay. So that's the, the, the point. I want to make this as repeatable as possible. So when the mouse moves to this location, I want to be able to press E and then get this, this pop-up screen. Uh, but if I put it in the middle and press E, I have a clarify selection. That actually might be more reliable because the pad entry seems to be the one at the top. So, so my, my object is to take these pads in this case. Yeah, this is fine. So I want to edit this pad. So I move my mouse to the pad, I hit E, I navigate to the edit pad, and I'm going to uh, remove the front mask, and then hit OK. And as you can see, no front mask. Uh, so, But I want to do that for a bunch of these. So how do we do that? Well, we used Mike Mike. That's the amazing Mike Mike. Um, I'm actually going to build the macro off screen because I want to be able to see the feedback. So let me pop this. Uh, let me make a frame, actually. Uh, hold on a moment. I think it's escape. Yeah, OK. Make frame. There's a new frame. And pop that out. 
and we might have to make that a little smaller so it's out of the way. All right. Okay. Hopefully you can still read that because this is going to have to be a little bit more out of the way. All right. Go back to our PCB new. Get me out of the way here. All right. Look at this. Look at this. We're doing stuff. Okay, so now if we're in here, we open up our pad input. All right, this should be okay. We'll do this. So I'm in KiCad. I want to do these things. I want to edit these pads. <clears throat> I've got Mike Mike open up here. Um, oops, I just kicked off that macro. So let's do this. There we go. Let's do macro number one, two, three. Yeah, let's do macro number three. We have to make this a little taller. There we go. <clears throat> Get me out of here. All right. So here I am in KiCad. I want to edit this. My current process is to hover over this, press E. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use uh, arrows to set to because the context is fixed. So I hit E, arrow down. Oh, I don't think I can do that. Yeah, I don't think I can do arrows yet. <laughs> this is unhelpful. All right, so let's just move it here so that I can click B in this area and then press E and then it'll open up. That's kind of cool. I think I was doing this with pads before. I think that was why it was working. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> so you need to, do, I would need to use arrow keys in this case, and the arrow keys are not programmed yet. <laughs> um, there's actually the code for that. Yeah, the extended codes in Arduino for this input are a little off. Um, so yeah, we've got we've got that set there. Uh, they just have to be programmed, but they do exist. It's just a little bit difficult to type them in right now because I don't have a good menu for it. <clears throat> Either, I mean, suffice to say, it's it's still it's going to work. It's gonna. Either way, I'm still going to a pad, pressing E. And then I want to press on this F mask, and then I want to press OK. So let's go there. We'll select it. Uh, but let's record a macro. So the first thing we're going to want to do, with the assumption is that I'm going to press this. I'm going to move my mouse into the appropriate position. Uh, once that takes place, I'm going to need to press E. And to do that, I'm going to record a key action. P tap. I'm actually going to type it in here. E. E. Tap E. Now, when I actually tap E, there's actually a, an imperceptible delay, and Mike Mike does not have any delays. Mike Mike is full speed all the time, always. And uh, that's not necessarily good, but it is what it is. So what we do have is a delay feature, and we will, so we can navigate either way. Come on, delay, let's give it a 2,500 mil, or 250 milliseconds, uh, a little bit of a delay to let that window pop up. So we navigate here, we press E, the window pops up, and now we want to navigate to this section and click that. So let me just go back over here. And we'll do the next action. I'm going to leave a little space here just in case we need to do, do something else. Uh, we'll navigate our mouse over. The mouse is slowly navigating. I actually need to increase the speed on it. <clears throat> because if you have low resolution, then it's, it's pretty easy. Uh, but if you're high resolution, then the mouse moves are 
choppy and slow. You need to increase them. So the goal is we're moving the mouse to here, this F mask. That's the move we want. And then after that move is completed, we're going to do a left click. Boom. And then um, after that move is completed, we're going to hit click on this, this OK over here, which you could probably do with Alt A or Alt O, uh, but we're just going to do another mouse move because it doesn't actually matter because it's super fast. Except, of course, navigating over here. There's, there's a few quality of life features that need to be worked out, but uh, once those are worked out, <laughs> it's going to be a lot better. The code just keeps getting better. All the way down to that OK. We're almost there. <sighs> OK. OK. We made it. This is the position. And then we do a left click. And you might notice I'm leaving some empty actions in here. Uh, it'll just skip over those. But if I wanted to insert a delay or do something extra in here, uh, it's, it's just easier to have them in there. Yes, you will be able to move these actions up and down and re resort them. Uh, but right now, no, that's a negative. So this is macro three. And let's see how it works. So there's our F mask. It is currently checked. I want it to be not checked. So let's go play a macro, and it's macro 3. So let's see what happens. All right. Well, I don't know if you saw that. Let's see if it worked. Okay, so it did work. And since we're just clicking F mask here, I can actually press it again, and it'll reselect F mask. So we're actually opening the mouse or we're, we're hitting E, we're clicking this F mask, and then we're hitting OK. So you can see that <clears throat> that quick process, I just unchecked F mask. And now I'm going to recheck it by kicking off this macro, macro number three. So we can see that it is changed. So this allows us to do cool stuff like change these macros or use this macro to change a bunch of these pads instead of clicking a bunch of times. Do that. Next pad. Next pad. I might have moved the mouse on that one, actually. No, it, it got it. Next pad. Next pad. So now we're doing a bunch of very redundant, very annoying processes, uh, but we're doing them with one button press. All that's played back at speed, and uh, I can do this. Oh, that's a bad render. Okay, there we go. Uh, I thought that would show with the F mask pad. Uh, I think it has to be inverted. Yeah, but I actually don't want to tick all the F mask buttons off here. I want them to be on. Uh, so this is just a, a real world example of what I was doing actually. I was using this this mic mic to record that macro to program the, the mic mic or to, to build the mic mic. Um, I think I'm actually going to undo that work and very easy to do to undo it because it's the same actions. It's the same set of actions and as long as this window stays in the same position we can still play it all back. And then if you wanted to do something like, uh, is it G edit, I think? And remember our, our other macros are still in play as well. So at macro zero still does click and then plus two equals macro one still does ASDF. Macro 2 does something else? Okay, that. So these are all, it's all still there. Uh, if you don't want this menu, actually, if you want a fast replay, we can go to this play macro shortcut, shortcut mode. And that sets, you know, macro 0, macro 1, macro 2, macro 3. So we get our, there's our delay plus equal, ASDF, ASDF. 
So that's actually a mouse move where it's dragging the cursor. But something like this, we can, you know, if you want to make this type, whatever it needs to type, as much as you want to type it. <laughs> and that delay. Very cool. So there's my macro outside of KiCad. It's typing E, and it's clicking, and it's waiting, and it's clicking OK. <clears throat> but again, our, our context has shifted. Mike Mike doesn't care. Mike Mike just plays back the macro as straight input, no matter what's going on your PC. So that's uh, neat. That's that's about it, actually. Uh, there's some new features that I plan on having for this. I don't even want to have that there. Um, let's see. I'm out of this mode. Uh, let's see what our features are. Hardware buttons. Oh yeah. Um, e tab. There's three pins here, grind out. Yeah, I got to test that out. That's going to be cool. Um, so it's just regular macro playback, regular key playback, uh, regular mouse movements, and all of it on a separate device that registers as a, a normal USB HID device. So there's no drivers to install or anything. All you need is a, and uh, just to, to prove it here, you can use the standard Arduino serial monitor. I actually, I have this open right now, so that's probably not going to work. Uh, all right, frame. There you go. Control C five zero. Of course, that was what I was about to press. I was like, you know, it's probably Control C plus five plus zero. That's that's probably exactly where it is. Oh, wait, that's still active. I'm in the frame. Um, shortcut mode. Oh, right. Okay. To get out of shortcut mode, you press the six button, which is just obvious, right? There's all your macros. Uh, they don't save right now, uh, so you kind of have to record them live while it's plugged in. But you'll be able to write to EEPROM afterwards. There's also probably going to be a serial dump uh, so that you can serial dump out the data, the hex data of what your instruction sets are, and then save them on your computer, and then dump them back in using the serial interface. Um, but that's... Let's see. X K? No? Oh, control C K. That's right. Because it actually reads control X. So let's go back to Arduino. Here's our standard Arduino serial monitor. And uh, it's kind of what I was talking about with, uh, with there being a weird kind of input. Because the Arduino serial interface is exactly the same, but it uses a different control scheme. So if I want to go down here, I hit J and I hit J twice and it I have to hit enter for it to process that input, which is less than ideal, but just as straight output, I'm allowed to like here in this uh, in this serial program, I'm actually not allowed to use enter or backspace <clears throat> because that's just the way that Arduino programmed their serial interface. But I can still <clears throat> do all the things here like uh, playback are important macros like uh, where is it was that just a click and then an ASDF why do I click and then do ASDF I see I already forgot that's macro 1 we've got our context here play macro macro 1 now we're moving back ooh where is the mouse? The mouse is getting stuck on some of these. Oh no, it's going all the way over here. That's weird. See, that seems like a bug. Oh, I'm clicking down here. That's why. And it's typing ASDF into that screen, which is not helpful. Yeah, the mouse is reading weird. So we actually don't need the mouse to read weird. We can just, the mouse to move, we can just make it, make it play back that ASDF macro. It's macro one. So we'll remove the mouse move and the mouse click. 
and now it's just type, tap ASDF. And then macro one is ASDF, ASDF. Highly important stuff here. So you get the picture, uh, and you can use this as a straight interface for controlling it, or you can control it blind, like, like I do sometimes. Pretty neat. So that is Mike Mike. Uh, macro playback with a separate interface. And uh, I guess that's about it. Uh, I don't know if anyone has any questions or if there's anyone even listening. <laughs> but I can play this back and people can understand at least what uh, what my mic, mic mic is supposed to do. Uh, it also has these uh, these interfaces. It's set up to, like, this is a serial interface for TX, RX, and ground. So you should be able to plug into it while it's plugged into another computer and then program it you know, like at this screen, uh, and then have it send output to another computer. And this is just an I squared C interface that I added on here in case you wanted to add that later because it's not, it's actually not on there right now. <clears throat> or it's not programmed right now. But that's, uh, that's Mike Mike. And uh, that's all I have to say about that. Let me just not save. And that's it. Ta-da. I don't know where to look. Ta-da. Everyone have a nice day.